You're watching the Video Revolution Podcast from Primo Productions. And as we went along through this little town, there were two guys about 60 years old leaning on their shovels. And one of them said, well, hello, Walter. Mr. Winston the left said, well, hello, Bill. The fellow Bill said, hey, that's the president of our railroad. He said, I know it. He said, are you mean that you're trying to tell me that you know the president of our railroad? He said, sure, I know him. He said, Bill, how could you know the president of our railroad? Very simple. 35 years ago, he and I started away doing the same thing you and I are doing about 10 miles down the road. He said, now, wait a minute, hold the phone, Bill. Now, I don't want to insult you, but are you trying to tell me that you and the president of our railroad started away same time, same place, doing the same thing, and now he's president of the railroad, and you're still doing what you're doing? He said, that's right. He said, Bill, how could anything like that have happened? Bill says, I don't know. I've wondered myself. I've laid awake sometime at night, tossing hours. Maybe luck had something to do with it. I don't know. But I guess if I had to be perfectly frank with him, I'd have to say, 35 years ago, I started awake for 40 cents an hour. 35 years ago, Mr. Walter Winston started for the railroad. I mean, stop sometime and say, what am I waking for? Do I love my job? Am I loyal? Am I trying? Am I enjoying it? Oh, my friend, the greatest gift you'll ever have is to enjoy it. You what? You heard about the two bricklayers. And one of them went up, somebody came along, they were laying brick. A fellow said to one, said, what you doing? He said, I'm laying brick, getting union wages double for overtime. Went up to the next and said, what are you doing? He looked off with a mystical expression on his face. He said, I'm building a cathedral, one whose spires will reach to heaven itself. One that'll be an important factor in the spiritual life of this community. Now, the guy lost his job because he was supposed to be building a garage. But <laughs> I don't mind telling you, you know which one was paid the greatest. Would you buy this idea, this second principle? Would you buy it enough? Just try it for a month. People are persuaded to do business with you more because of the depth of your own conviction than the height of your logic. More because of your enthusiasm, your desire to help them, the way you feel about solving their problem than anything you can say about your product or service. If I had to give you the definition of salesmanship as we see it, it's this. It is converting people, no, not to your way of thinking, but to your way of feeling and believing. And if you feel deeply about your product or service, if you're proud of your company, you are a walking climate of positive acceptance. They say that words are the fingers that mold the mind of man. Now, people can refuse words, but they can't refuse an attitude. My Christmas card for 10 years has been the same thing. An old tramp lying on a bench, knees out, need to shave. Hell, a guy been combed with an egg beater. Here goes a Rolls Royce going by, and driven with a man with a tall silk hat being driven by a chauffeur. And that old tramp philosophically says, there, except for me, go I. My friends, the only chains and shackles that hold any of us back from anything we want to accomplish in life are those chains and shackles which we ourselves forge in the fires of doubt and hammer out on the anvil of lack of understanding of these six great neglected principles that contribute 90% to your success. Um, Merlin Cundiff always uses a little uh, demonstration. As long as she's not on the program today, I'm going to steal it. Put your hand up, everybody, will you? Come on. Now watch me carefully. Shake it around. Now cup it like that. Now very quickly, I want you to do what I tell you to. Bring it right straight to your chin. How many of you brought it to your chin? I didn't say your cheek. I see a few of you doing like this. No. I said bring it to your chin. You were influenced by the example I set rather than what I said. Oh, please, my friend, remember. Please remember that you influence people as much by your action, your feeling, than anything that you can say. I want to leave you this little toast. It's inspired by the affection and love of this great man, Will Rogers. May the hinges of friendship never rust. May the wings of love never lose a feather. May our sacred devotion to the service we render and the company we wait for grow deeper and stronger each year and not be broken as long as we live. Because a bell is not a bell until you ring it. A song is not a song until you sing it. Love was not put in our heart to stay. 
Love is only love when we give it away. So here's to those we love. Here's to those who love us. Here's to those that we love, that love those that love us. So let's spend the rest of our lives loving our fellow man and rendering the greatest service that we can. Good luck. God bless you. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for having me.